everyone. Thank you so much for being here today. My name is Denise. I'm also known as Hey Wig Sister on Instagram and Facebook. Today I'm here to bring you four options for making the part line on your wig look more realistic. I'm talking about a part line on either a synthetic or human hair wig. Depending on your wig and depending on what you wear underneath your wig, sometimes our wigs can look a little naughty on the part line like this. This one's not too bad because I've already put some makeup on it, but this is what I'm referring to. There are four different, well, there's more than four, but today I'm gonna show you four options for covering up those knots or drawing out that part line or hiding your bio hair underneath to make your wig look more realistic. So if you wanna know more about this, then stick around. <music> really common question that I get on all of my social media and email and I have done videos showing you how to pluck a part line and use makeup to make it more realistic in the past. I will link a few one or two of those videos below so that you can check them out if you want to go more in depth on how to make a part line look more realistic. Today we're just using four different methods no plucking. The wig I'm wearing right now is Leah 2 by Ellen Villa. I cannot remember the color. I will make sure to link information in the description, a link to my review for sure but the name of this color as well and please note in my videos I typically link a lot of helpful information in the description below the video so you should check that out especially if you're new because there could be some helpful information so the first trick I'm going to show you is face powder any type of face powder will work this is just some loose powder that I've had for I don't even know seven years long long time I don't use it on my face and I didn't throw it away for some reason, and I'm glad I didn't because I like to use it on my wigs. You can use a pressed powder. You can go to the dollar store and get yourself some powder if you wanna try the powder technique. I just recommend that you get a color slightly lighter than your skin tone because your scalp tends to be lighter than your skin tone. And, and I think we probably have noticed that, but if not, that is the truth. So basically, you're gonna take a little powder on any sort of an applicator or makeup brush. I love these long brushes. They make putting powder on uh, the part line really easy and I'll make sure to link them below. But then you just take some of that powder and you just swipe it on to the part line. If you get too much on there or you get it on the hair, you can take a spoolie or you know a paper towel or a Q-tip, but I like to take a spoolie and then I just go on either side of that part line and I just smooth it out and that way I can rub off any of that extra powder. You can also go right onto that part line if you need to blend it in a little bit better, but look at that. Powder is one of the ways I typically do this because it's so quick, it's so easy, I always have it in my cupboard, and it works with virtually every wig that I've ever tried it on. So face powder is tip one, super easy. Many people already have some face powder in their cupboard. Tip number two is foundation, concealer, or some type of makeup made for wigs. I actually have two Milano products here. This is a scalp illusion product I bought a few years ago off of Amazon. And this is a, the, a scalp illusion product that they have that just came with a human hair wig I just purchased from them. I will look and see if I can find both of these to link or one of them. I don't know if this one is even available anymore because it's quite old but you don't have to spend money on something special. Foundation and concealer will work just fine. Again, make sure you're going a little bit lighter than the makeup that you wear on your face because your scalp tends to be a little bit lighter. And what you do, and the reason why you might wanna do this instead of powder, is powder doesn't last. It'll last through the wear. So if you put it on and wear your wig for the day, it'll be fine for that wear, but it does tend to come off really, really easily. And I find I have to reapply the powder every single time I wear that piece. If you don't wanna have to deal with that, you could use something a little more permanent. Now, if you use makeup or the scalp uh, cream, uh, this is like makeup, it's like cream makeup, then that will not wash off. It will fade and you will have to touch it up over time, but it will not wash off. So I want you to keep that in mind. I'm just getting a little bit on my, this is actually a Milano spoolie, but again, you can get any, I have some real cheap spoolies I found on, on Amazon that I will link. I don't want you to feel like 
You have to spend all kinds of money to be successful on your wig wearing journey. The wigs themselves are expensive enough and I want you to feel empowered to make them your own with cheaper products and hacks if that's what you feel comfortable with. And so then you take this, if it were makeup or foundation or whatever, and you can kind of dab that on the part line. Now this is gonna take a little more work. It's going to get on the hair a little bit and it's gonna look a little fake in the beginning. So the process is a little bit more in depth when you do it this way. The spoolie will come in handy to try to get some of it off the hair if you get it on the hair. And I will get a lot on the hair because I'm looking in my phone here and I can't, you know, it's not, it's not like looking in a mirror. But you can do that if you if this if you get too much on the hair and the spoolie isn't working, you can take a Q-tip, you can take makeup remover and a Q-tip to get some off the hair. If the wig needs a lot of help, if the if if it's really knotty and really not looking realistic, one thing I will do is I will put this on the underside of the wig and on the top of the wig. So I'll start, first of all, you have to find your part line when you go inside the wig. So I put my finger over that part line so that when I go to it, I can see where my finger is. And then you can paint this on over that part line on the underside. Then you can flip it over, use the spoolie a little bit, and then you can use a little bit more on the outside of it. This video is not for me to prove to you that these, these things work. So I'm not gonna go any further than that. They do work, they're all personal preference, and it really depends on what you're trying to do and how much help your wig needs. This is one that I've used in the past. I used to do this early on when I was more uncomfortable with my wigs. Now that I'm more comfortable with them, I find powder works just fine. That may not be enough for you, which is why I wanted to show you this technique. So, powder, cream, makeup of some sort or foundation, and now we'll move on to the third. That last wig, by the way, is a human hair wig by Stacked Hair. And if you find that you try the foundation or the scalp, um, the, the, the powder like the Milano or the cream makeup, I'm losing my words, and you don't like it, just take some makeup remover and maybe a soft, a cotton ball can work or like a little makeup pad and you can get it off as much as possible and then you can go with the powder. Again, it's trial and error and you will eventually find what works best for you and what works for one person doesn't work for everybody. Now, this next two things I'm gonna combine into one are this is scar tape. And this is a, a paper medical tape, which I've just seen all over Instagram and by people I really trust. And I really love this as an option as well. So let me show you how these work. First of all, the wig I'm wearing is John Renault Carrie in the color Salted Caramel. It's a human hair wig. This is the fully hand tied cat version of Carrie. There are actually three versions of Carrie out there. Now with the scar tape, this is a really popular way to, to make the part line look more realistic. I will be honest with you guys, I struggle with the scar tape. I struggle to get it to look natural at the front. Where the scar tape ends is what is hard for me because this really, really helps, but it's also very obvious where that ends. So some people don't have trouble with it, so maybe it's just my technique, but I find, and this is just like a stretchy scar tape, I will put... Um, again, links to everything. You don't have to buy from my links. They are affiliate links and you do help my ministry when you do buy from them, but just go take a look at it and then you can go find that product somewhere else. If you are, don't like shopping online, just go look at the link and then go to Walmart or CVS or wherever and you can find the same product. So for me, when I use scar tape, first of all, let me try to show you really quickly. You know, another reason why these, the tapes are really useful. If you have bio hair and it's dark and it's maybe more than what I have and you find that the part doesn't look realistic because you can see through to your bio hair, the tapes can really help that because it will totally cover that bio hair. You can also wear a wig cap which can help, but for a lot of people, the wig caps are uncomfortable. So you can kind of see, this isn't the most realistic looking part. I actually don't care. I don't think anybody notices. I don't think it looks terrible. So I normally just wear this just like this and don't do anything about it. But if you're very uncomfortable with that, then you can take the tape 
And these, this isn't another reason why these are good is because they're not permanent and they're really easy to remove, but you can take the tape. You just stick it on the wig. This is not going to hurt your lace. It doesn't stick that well. And some of them stick better than others. This one does not. So I, you will not risk ruining your wig. And then you just put the wig on. Look at that, you guys. Now, this is what I'm talking about. I have trouble with that front there. But let's just say I used some makeup or something to blend that front. Look at that. Now, again, we're all very different on our preferences and what we're comfortable with. This may be too dark for what you're preferring. I know a lot of women who use the scar tape every single time they wear a wig and it works perfectly for them. So don't knock it just because it's not your preference. I really want to stress that. I see so many comments in videos of people whose preference hasn't been satisfied by what's being showed and then they comment negatively like it's a terrible wig or it's a terrible option. Maybe for you, but not for everybody. I'm giving you these either that I use successfully or that I've seen hundreds of women use successfully. Let me do this again, because I want to show you what I mean by you may need to take a second step because I didn't put this on straight this time. So first of all, you've got to finagle how you're going to put that end. Where are you going to have that end start? And then you could take some makeup and you could kind of try to blur that. So maybe you're not putting makeup on the whole piece. It's not working very well right now. I have done that successfully. Again, I don't want this video to be 20 minutes long. So I'm just trying to give you ideas. Working out the execution is up to you. The last one I'm gonna show, oh, it's getting hot in here. Can you see I'm getting shiny? Is, or maybe I'm having a hot flash, is this paper tape. This is new. I just got this roll of paper tape because I've seen a number of people show this on Instagram and it's great. So you take the paper tape this one you stick right on your head wherever that part's going to be this does not pull your hair out it does not stick that well but it's just enough that you can stick the wig on you just the trick is finding where to, where, where are you going to put that where is the part on your wig but look at that you guys look at how much better you can see through that than you could before the paper tape is awesome if you've got bio hair that you're trying to hide, but you don't want to use makeup. You don't want to put anything on your wig that might not come fully out and you don't like the scar tape, the paper tape. It's super cheap. I think I paid like $4 and some cents for it on Amazon. And, and you may actually have to employ different techniques with different wigs, depending on the problem you're trying to solve. But if you're wearing wigs, and you're struggling with the wig journey, here's one thing that you shouldn't have to struggle with. There are solutions. There's more than this, but these are four that I know work well and that virtually anybody can do. I hope this helped. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching. And because some of you are going to be really concerned about this paper tape pulling your hair out, I thought I'd throw this on the end. It really will not pull your hair out. It does not stick to it that much. Don't worry about that.